If I had to sum up today's entire video in a single word, it would be controversial. I mean, if you ask 10 different people for their opinions on homeschooling, you're going to get 10 different answers. Some say it's the worst thing you could do to a child and you're dooming them to a lifetime of social awkwardness. Others say the pros outweigh the cons of public school and they choose homeschooling any day. And all of these people have come together to argue with each other in a new video that Jubilee just dropped, and I am excited to go through it. But I'm not just here to watch the video and laugh at people arguing. I do have a lot of really strong opinions on this as I've been through through public school, homeschool, and college. And I guess some of my opinions agree with the general consensus, but I do have a few hot takes based on my unique experience. But I can't lie to you. I am just mostly excited to watch people argue with each other and then talk about it with all of you. But first, welcome. My name is D'Angelo, and I am your professor of interstellar gastronomy, which is a very real degree that I definitely do have. Or maybe I'm just broadcasting myself talking in my room like YouTube used to be. And in today's lecture, we're here to settle the debate once and for all. Is homeschooling actually worth it? Spoiler alert, as you're going to see in this video, it uh, heavily depends on who is doing the homeschooling. So Jubilee, huge channel, known for their group discussion videos. And the one we'll be watching is called Are Homeschool Kids Smarter? We're off to a great start with the title. Teachers are more open about their political ideologies, about their self-identification. Oh. I personally don't believe that belongs in the school. Bro, we are seven seconds into this video. It's one thing I hate to see in schools is when people self-identify. If you have an identity at all, why are you even within five miles of a child? Anyways, I'm sure she's going to be my favorite slash S. All right. So on the left, we've got our four homeschool folks. These three are parents. And this person was a homeschool student. And then on the right, we've got our public schooling peeps. So the guy in the green shirt's a current high school student. And the other three are educators. And our first assumption is homeschooling can lead to more socially awkward children than public schooling. So in Jubilee videos, everybody who agrees with the statement comes forward to discuss it first. I was socially awkward as a result of me being homeschooled. I feel like I only got along with younger kids because I was so stunted. Oof, we're starting off strong. I do think one of the most common criticisms of homeschool is that if you do it, your kids are not going to know how to interface with other people. And clearly that is the case sometimes. As for me, I have I've always preferred extremely limited bits of social interaction, and that's whether I was in public school, homeschool, college, etc. One could argue nature versus nurture, but I do feel like I just my social battery gets drained really quickly. And who knows, maybe if I just did public school all the way right into college, I would just be a social butterfly, but um I, I kind of doubt it. Homeschoolers are far more susceptible to it, and mm -hmm. you have to be so much more active mm -hmm. yeah. in order to get your kids out there. I think public school is convenient in terms of socialization in that a parent doesn't really have to make additional effort to find places for their child to interact with children of a similar age. But there are certainly no shortage of places to do that outside of school. And I don't really know if I like the kids I met at school better than the ones I met in other places. It's been a while, but my memory of children is that they're just kind of awful. Not all of them. I'm sure there's some lovely, sweet people, but man, where were they when I was in school? Let's let's bring in the disagreeers. Oh, we got the naysayers. Okay, so these three people think that homeschooling does not lead to more socially awkward children. I, I was, and I'll be honest, I still am a pretty socially awkward person, and I'm in public school. It is a good point that going to public school does not automatically equal zero social awkwardness. My kid, my 13-year-old when he was 13, could read. I sure hope it does. Danny says, I can't make friends. I don't get it. I don't understand. His mom said, will not you read this book? How to Win Friends and Influence People. And he goes and reads it and he comes back two days later and he says, I totally get it now. Okay. I'm pretty sure this is why homeschooling gets a bad rap. I just feel like when Dale Carnegie wrote How to Win Friends and Influence People, it wasn't as a substitute for helping your children find actual friends. I'm not saying this guy's kids had no friends. I'm just saying the homeschool side is off to an interesting start, to say the least. How to make decisions, whether they're bad or good, it's learned in the public schools. And a lot of times the parents are sheltering or they think they're sheltering their kids. I like the word sheltering because I think it kind of speaks to the intention of homeschooling a child. And personally, I feel like the intention is the biggest factor deciding whether or not homeschooling is good. I can think of a couple scenarios in which homeschooling may be beneficial, like health related scenarios, bullying, safety. But wanting to shelter your child from the world is 
probably a terrible reason. <laughs> Not because I don't think kids should be sheltered from the world, which is indeed uh, wild, but it's just the funny thing about being a kid is like the more things you kind of keep from them, Honestly, they're just going to get better and better at finding them out anyway. As I'm sure we all know just from remembering being a kid, no parent shelters their child quite as much as they think they do. Next up, parents should have a say in what their children learn at school. Oh no. I'm not a parent, but I, I do have some opinions on this, but let's see what everyone else is saying first. Okay, it seems like pretty much everyone agrees with this one. You are there to teach facts. You are not there to promote ideology. Oh man. I really I really think that people who use certain words like ideology, I, I would really like them to define what they mean by that. Seeing as Louisiana is officially requiring that the Ten Commandments be displayed in every public school classroom, according to NPR, I, I feel pretty confident saying that's promoting an ideology. And so does the lady in blue have a problem with this, I wonder? I would think that that would come up so much more in homeschooling, no? A lot of parents are doing it because they want their certain ideology to be taught. Well, I feel like within the home, that's okay. Oh, man. I get what she's saying. I just think the notion of, no, you don't indoctrinate my kids. I indoctrinate them is really, really funny. But are you also teaching all of yes. all yeah, the religions? Okay. If these people are teaching their children about all religions, then I think that's totally fine and a lot different than teaching them that there is one religion. Growing up, I wish I had been taught about all religions. I would have just picked the coolest one or just like mix and match for like a vibe. Like, how are we feeling today? Is it giving Christianity? Let's talk specifically about like sexual education. Mm -hmm. Oh no, don't talk specifically about that. I'm trying to get monetized. A very good friend of mine, I feel like a lack of education for such a basic human function was really um, detrimental where like she she had to rely on her on her friend group. I promise you that will happen 10 times out of 10. If you do not teach your child something like that, they are going to wind up finding it out from somewhere. Somewhere you probably don't want them to find it out. Like the internet, their dumb little friends, no offense. And so the fact that some parents act like they just don't want their children to ever even know how sex works is crazy. Because either you do somehow succeed and now your kids are just ignorant and for what? Or what is more likely, you're just no shot. They're going to find out. And I just feel like your reproductive system is a thing. Why does it have to be so controversial? I don't have kids, so I can't just say, yeah, there's some objective maturity level. But I can promise you like 18 is not the age you should be learning how bodies work because that is really sad. And what's sadder is it happens very often. I feel like when we start promoting ideologies and self-identification oh and like all these things that are coming up these days, I feel like sometimes that gets a little too far. It's not just teaching what, there's how to in there. Would you be able to lay out specific examples of that? Just do some search on it. It doesn't matter, liberal, conservative, whatever. It's out there in detail. Okay, um, it didn't take long for the words liberal and conservative to come up. Details on cunnilingus or flush, you know, it's positions, and, positions and all this stuff yeah. to elementary kids. Yeah. And it's happening. Saying it's happening after something that is not happening does not mean the thing is happening. There was a library book for like first graders and it literally showed positions. I can't remember the exact name of the book, but I can look it up. You see how these people can't even name like an instance of the phenomenon that is apparently happening. What these parents are referring to would be grooming and that's not really how school works. That's definitely not what sexual education is or looks like within the classroom. Like what is happening here? Well, that wasn't that wasn't at a school I worked with. It was just at the library. Oh, wow. But I've seen things like that within other yeah. schools as well. No, you have not. You just haven't. I'm so sorry, but like that's not true. I am so sad that these are the two representatives they've shown so far for homeschooling. One who doesn't want teachers to promote ideology like self-identification, and one who is trying to warn us of the endemic of picture books on how to have more riz. Jubilee, surely, out of the many, many homeschool parents, y'all could have found somebody less that. This particular brand of homeschooling that is a reaction to a problem that doesn't exist, I don't do that. And the fact that you're out here spreading misinformation, 
already just casually in like an interview with adults, I would be terrified to see what exactly you're sharing with those kids of yours. Is that too personal? Did I cross the line? I don't care. You guys should not be homeschooling your kids. In other more liberal places, I've seen posts online about, look at this is the ABCs of LGBT. I'm sorry. These facial expressions are sending me right now. Also, I love how we've conflated the ABCs of LGBT with like books about positions on how to actually do adult things. It's crazy how hard you have to work to make being LGBT sound inappropriate in order to actually criticize it. Because in reality, there is nothing wrong with it. You can put any identity in terms that are appropriate for a child. Johnny likes Jimmy. Sally may have been born a different way, but she's Sally. The fact that people think like heterosexuality is perfectly fine to talk to kids about in kid terms, but any sort of LGBT identity is all of a sudden sexual in nature is really just so frustrating. If your kid is old enough to know what Johnny likes Sally means, he's old enough to know what Johnny likes Jimmy means, period. Literally nobody wants kids to actually learn adult content, and I'm so tired of this argument. It is happening, it's just not everywhere. Man, it is happening is just the new go-to. <laughs> I'm gonna have to add that one to my like, watch out for this phrase list. I teach here in Los Angeles, and I would say that's probably one of the most liberal areas where you could be, but I have never experienced any of that. Yeah, forgive me for choosing to believe the actual educator who is currently within the public school system. I feel like she would know what is happening more so than these people who don't even send their kids to school. Like a book existing is not the same as it being taught, it being in a curriculum. And Thank I think you. it's but super it is in important. Curriculums. Oh man. Okay, we got this. We got this. We good? I'm back. Let's go. I think the best way would to do it would be to bring the children and the parents into an assembly. So do you agree that sex ed should take place in a public school? I think so. Maybe I will actually be able to get through this video. At least one of the homeschool parents is not paranoid. Thank you, lady in the really cool looking dress. All right, so we've got the next assumption. Kids are safer at home than in schools. I feel like we don't even need to have a discussion about this because the answer is obviously it depends. There are some horrible things that happen at home and there are some horrible things that happen at schools. A statement this broad could never be answered in a yes or no question, frankly. But I'm sure people are going to try. Someone had backfired a car, but they adjusted the car to make it sound like gunfire. <laughs> people were just running everywhere. People were running onto the street. This is so painful watching somebody describe like trauma. You would hope that your home is a safe place. Yeah. yeah. But your home sadly could be a cage for a child. That's true. I agree with literally Camille. She has a missed at even once for me in this video. Anyway, nobody really agreed or disagreed with that premise because I mean, it is so context dependent. Homeschool kids are smarter than public school kids. My extremely unpopular opinion is that being academically inclined should not be considered being smart. And I say this as somebody who was, I guess, good at school for lack of a better term. If you show me two kids and one knows algebra and the other doesn't, I'm not gonna assume algebra kid is smarter. And I was algebra kid growing up. Will the agreeers please step forward? Okay, thankfully nobody agrees with this one. Actually have the disagreeers come forward. A good homeschool, you could have, you know, more opportunities tailored to you, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're a smarter person. Mm -hmm. It just means you have more access to resources. Hold on a second. Do I agree with her? <laughs> I mean, if you're right, you're right. And this is exactly my opinion. There are so many ways that privilege overlaps with academia that I would seriously hesitate to call any child not smart. And on the flip side, being fast tracked because you are academically inclined is also not always good for a child. There's a lot of emphasis placed on being advanced and being ahead and skipping this and testing out of that. All things I have done, but it, it, it does get kind of stressful for a child when like, you don't have a minimum standard of acceptance for the performance of your child. You only ever want them to do better and you want them to do it faster than everybody else because they can and they can is not always a strong enough reason for that in my experience because if i'm being real with you i wasn't a smart kid i just hyper fixate on things and so reading writing and arithmetic kind of happened to be my special interest but i promise you that if they were not i would have just been 
so difficult to teach, I believe. I was just lucky that I happened to have an interest in the things that people say you're smart for knowing. It was always very easy. They were doing math that was lower than his level. When I pulled him from homeschool and I started giving him more challenging work that was at what I thought was his level. And that is why I was homeschooled. I was waiting for it to come up in this video. So yes, out of the many, many reasons that people homeschool their children, my parents' approach was, wow, he's really great at the school thing. Let's make it harder. And listen, I assure you, there was no malice there at all. It was definitely a thing where they were thinking I had this potential and they believed they could do more to really bring it out. And objectively, they did. <laughs> I learned more and I did it faster outside of the public school system. I had a very specific homeschool experience that was tailored from getting me from like middle school to college as quickly as possible. And so I learned everything I needed to learn. Like I had great SAT scores, got into college easily, and it all happened very quickly. I'm turning 26 this week, but I graduated college with a bachelor's degree like six or seven years ago. 19 years old, bachelor's degree, and nowhere to go but down actually, because I didn't even really have an identity outside of my academic performance whatsoever. And so I just kind of feel like super advanced kids and enabling their advancedness and pushing them to always remain ahead of the curve isn't really the best course of action nine times out of 10. Because really, why does your kid have to be like two or three grades ahead of literally everyone? What's wrong if some things in life are easy? That's a question I ask myself all the time. But yeah, from the smart kid to the rest of the world, I would I'd like to say I had the right to be dumb as hell just like any other kid and I wish I could have exercised that more and in many ways I was still just a dumb kid. Homeschool parents are not qualified to be teachers. Ooh. When I was in high school, even like sophomore, junior year, my mom stopped being able to help me with homework. So whereas my mom did not specialize, I guess, in almost any of the things that I was learning, she always made it her job to find really specific instructional resources created by experts. And that is why I was able to take the SAT at age 15, pass it, get into school, honors, all that stuff. Cause like the moment moment something wasn't working for me, she would just switch it. Oh, that course, you're not vibing with it? Okay, here's this other course. And we were doing this mostly without a budget to speak of. So many free resources, MIT open courseware, stuff like that. And then my mom would just check my work. Did I get things right? Did I understand? She'd point to a concept in the book and be like, what is this? I would explain it. And the reason that worked for me personally was because that is my learning style. And that's why I would say for me personally, a lot of aspects of homeschooling were amazing. So I guess the best way I can put it is my mom was not qualified to be a public school teacher, but you better believe she learned how to be qualified to teach me. And I will be grateful for that forever. And at the very least, I think that is what any parent who is homeschooling should be doing. I didn't like either agree or disagree because there are homeschool parents who aren't well qualified. There are public school teachers who aren't well qualified. So I guess it does bear mentioning that like not every teacher is great, but I do typically believe the art of teaching draws in great people, which is why there are so many great teachers. And I know there's curriculum out there and they can go get that information, but why not have it within their school? The kids are getting it firsthand from that teacher. I hear what she's saying, but for me personally, I cannot sit through lectures. For the entirety of the four years that I was in college, I was just drawing. <laughs> I would sit there and draw or like read something. Sometimes I would even just read the textbook but like not listen to the professor. And this isn't because I'm too cool for school. I, I just genuinely cannot process lectures. If you give me too much information or information over too long of a time period, it, the, it's like a brick wall. I don't really know how to describe it. And so that's why I see my success in homeschool, not as an indicator that everyone should be homeschooled, but just as a really specific set of circumstances based off of my learning style. And that's what I believe homeschool should be. A human being teaching me things doesn't add to it because a lot of times I might not even be able to process what they're saying in the most effective way. I need the book. I need the curriculum. And honestly, homeschooling was kind of just cutting out the middleman for me. I'm just the kind of person where if you gave me like an article tutorial and a video tutorial, I will read the article and 10 times out of 10. I just, 
I have to be able to do it at my own pace. It wasn't thinking that we've got to put it in their brain, but more we draw it out. And so what we're trying to do is invite the kids to learn to be their own teachers. It almost sounds like he's talking about unschooling. I know he's probably not, but y'all got like 300K on this? Not bad at all. But I swear, throw in one of those like unschooling influencers from TikTok, that would have been 3.7 million. All right, public schools are the best way to expose children to diverse groups. Not some of the public schools I've seen, I'll tell you that right now. This is where I would say it is not even dependent on the school. I think it's dependent on where you live. As a parent, you choose which environments you're gonna put your children in for to make sure they are experiencing diversity. It's true. I lived in Glasgow for six months. Okay, just casually dropping that little bit of lore. I'm starting to think this woman is like the main character of this video. A lot of the things that you guys are talking about as problems with diversity, that isn't because of homeschooling or private schooling, it's because of demographics. I need her to stop saying things I agree with because it's making me uncomfortable. In homeschool, you do have to make an effort to go out and socialize with people, but you also have more choice in who you socialize with. Yo, what? <laughs> okay, never mind. I think we're back to back to beefing. Is it just me or is the phrase you have more choice in who you socialize with kind of crazy something about the framing of that sets off an alarm but that could just be me anyways moving on to the very last premise i am satisfied with the american education system literally who would agree with that oh okay nobody oh oh wow i've been working in the public school system the american public school system for over 25 years i'm satisfied now do i see room for growth absolutely that's fair for the most part people are happy with their salaries um kids are happy with what they're learning they they come to school happy for the most part the lunch the lunch system works security is working uh, kids feel safe okay i i think she just must teach at a really good school definitely not in validating her experience but i'm just saying like the kids feeling safe and the, the food is good and the teachers are happy with their salaries is definitely not indicative of the general american education system it would be really cool if we could pay these people maybe a little a lot so much more um teachers are creating an amazon wish list like i just posted mine last week you know and that is awful that is awful. The idea that a teacher would have to post an Amazon wish list when there's allegedly taxpayer dollars that should be paying for school supplies. Bro, this is a thing. This is like a whole thing. I did not know that teachers were literally having to make Amazon wish lists to get materials for their schools. Mrs. Reynolds High School Math. After teaching sixth grade for 20 years, I was asked to move up to high school algebra and geometry. I absolutely love it. The items on my list will help my students have the materials they need. So there's like cleaning supplies, pens, pencils, clipboards. But well, what is that? More pencils. It looks like she added the, the pencils, pens, Uno, and the broom this year. Okay, great. I don't know if I did that right, but I sure hope I did. Knock them dead, Mrs. Reynolds. I mean, not literally, because I assume they're children, but you know. Okay, this school's library media center needs clipboards. Hand sanitizer. Yes, kids are just disgusting. Markers. Okay, get wrecked, random library in Missouri. Miss Anderson's fourth grade classroom. Okay, wait, I don't know if I should buy the Play-Doh for Miss Anderson or for me, because low-key... I miss Play-Doh. Play-Doh is awesome. Baggies. Hella books. You're trying to teach your kids about, let's see, kindness, mindfulness, very demure. Thankfulness, responsibility, flexible expectations. <laughs> I wish somebody had read that book to me when I was a kid. Get wrecked, Miss Anderson. I don't know why I'm being so like antagonistic while doing this, but I'm sticking with it. Get wrecked. The site's really lit though. I just Googled teacher Amazon wish list and then clear the list came up. Get your teach on.com slash clear the list. They have like the whole spreadsheet. I mean, I guess technically anybody can add a list here, but like at worst, you're just buying a random person a pad of sticky notes and a stapler. I'm sure the things I just sent out into the ether are helping somebody. I would hope so. Man, so many teachers are asking for like 
disinfectants kids are gross i get it no just kidding i would not add that as my gift message all right take that miss metzinger now i've done four so i feel like i have to do five just to round it out we need some equality though i think these have all been like miss and misses mr perez i found one man don't you just hate the dei they're making teachers men now pencils other pencils whatever this is a door hangy thingy for the kids thingies to go and hangy and most importantly animals figure 54 piece mini jungle toy set vital four toy realistic wild vinyl plastic animal learning party favorites for boys girls kids toddlers for a small playset obviously i keep deleting the enjoy your gift message because it's so basic i would rather just say nothing okay y'all mr perez has officially gotten wrecked anyways i literally forgot that i was watching this does anyone have any final thoughts final words they want to say don't just relinquish all of your responsibility on the public school system, private or wherever. You are your te kid's first teacher. Why isn't everyone in the entire world like this lady over here? I think that would solve a lot of problems. And you know, all things considered, I do think everyone answered the questions to the best of their ability. And maybe I'll just leave it at that. I always appreciate a diverse range of perspectives because you never know if it's going to expand your brain or just erode your brain cells in real time. And I feel like I had a good balance of both. So works for me. But yeah, my official verdict is most children should not be homeschooled. Like there's absolutely no way, no how that should be the default for everybody. I think there are very specific sets of circumstances that make homeschooling make sense. And it's up to every parent to find the best way of taking care of their child. I appreciate what I learned being homeschooled and I appreciate what I learned in public school. I appreciate what I learned in college. It all happened to mismatch together into a nice story for me, but I recognize that honestly, it doesn't always go so well for others. And I say it was a nice story, but my mental health in college was like eroding on the daily because I just felt like I had so much pressure to succeed, but I made it allegedly. The desire itself to homeschool a child absolutely does not qualify you to homeschool a child but humility the desire for learning and the desire to instill learning and find the resources to help your child that's what's really going to help everyone succeed so if you are not a person who can learn then i really don't think you should be trying to teach anything but if this is like a dual learning opportunity for you and the person you're raising and your intentions are to help them succeed in the world just as i personally feel like i was helped to succeed and i'm ever so grateful for knock yourself out just uh if your kids are lonely maybe give them a little bit more than a dale carnegie book it's my only bit of advice from a man with no children who does not know anything about child care i think i know enough to say that a book is not a friend though so just throwing that out there. But the ways in which homeschooling did or did not work for me doesn't really say anything about anybody else's experience. I've seen and met, encountered, and been friends with a lot of people who have had great experiences. Similarly, I've seen a lot coming from the other side. And I'm really quite interested to hear your experiences or just opinions in general. But that's my take on the situation. Dave's take is that school itself is an ideology that is being pushed upon all children from both homeschool parents and teachers. Yes, I regret to inform you, Dave is an unschooler, but he doesn't have kids, so does that make it better or just weird? And of course, I'm excited to hear your take. I mean, this is the part of the video where a layman would ask you to subscribe, like the video, leave a comment, but I will ask you to enroll, evaluate the video, and submit your feedback, because I am of course running a 100% completely, totally, all the way, mostly, for the most part, somewhat, not really, unaccredited university. Probably. Just ask anybody in the student body and they'll confirm it for you. We're totally legit. And as for me, whether you'll see me in 24 hours or 24 months is anyone's guess, but until then, thanks for watching. Your homework for today is to clear a random teacher's Amazon wish list if you can, or if not, just tell friends about the site. Because honestly, anything is better than what teachers get from the public school system.